So good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully everyone's awake after our little break and ready to uh, talk about uranium production. But again, I'm John Cash, CEO for UR Energy. Uh, we have uh, the up and running Lost Creek project in Wyoming. It's an in situ mine. And we also have the Shirley Basin project in Wyoming, which will also be an in situ mine once we get it up and running. So those are the two properties that I'll be covering today. There are flagship assets. Uh, we have other uh, development properties, exploration properties, but uh, for today's discussion, we'll focus on uh, Lost Creek and Shirley Basin. So the photograph here is of our Lost Creek mine that's been up and running since 2013. We like to show that, to show we are a real mining company. We are producing pounds. Uh, the uh, drums on the right, that was our first shipment of yellow cake that went out in the fall of 2013. So my attorney does require that I do the disclaimer. I might make some forward-looking statements. Please be aware of that. We encourage you to do your homework before investing because there is risk in mining and all investments. So this slide really is kind of uh, our jumping off point, uh, really highlights a number of the things I want to talk about with our assets. First off, starting with Lost Creek, again, it's been up and running since uh, 2013. So for over 10 years now, we've been producing there. Uh, non-stop. We've never shut down Des despite the low market. We did allow production to decline considerably uh, for a few years uh, once we had sold uh, all the uh, product into long-term contracts and those contracts ended. So for a number of years production was very minimal but it never went to zero. In the fall of last year uh, going into winter we were successful in signing up a long-term agreement. It's the first one we've had for a number of years and then two more very good long-term agreements following that that gave us the confidence to begin ramping up production again. So we've now started up two new areas, Header House 2-4 and Header House 2-5 are now both online. And uh, we're gonna be using pounds from there and subsequent Header Houses going forward to feed into those long-term contracts that we've signed up. Those long-term contracts are good for 3.75 million pounds over the next six years. We have a very good resource at Lost Creek, 11.9 million pounds of the measured and indicated resource, 6.6 .6 million pounds of inferred. Uh, the grade is 0.04. And you might say, wow, that's a lot lower than uh, Athabasca, maybe two, three orders of magnitude less. But we are an in situ miner. So those grades are within the norm for in situ miners. And we've had exceptional recoveries. I'll show you our cost of production a little bit further on, but you're going to see we can compete with uh, the Ath Athabasca production. So we believe we've got about a 14-year mine life at Lost Creek. Um, lots of room for growth via exploration. And I will make a distinction there between Lost Creek and Shirley Basin in a little bit. But we have a lot of roll fronts, mineralized zones at Lost Creek that we have yet to explore. Different geologic horizons vertically and also laterally. The mine itself is licensed at 1.2 million pounds a year production. The plant is licensed at 2.2 million pounds a year production. The delta between the two is intentional so that we can bring uh, material in from a competitor or from one of our other projects, i.e. Shirley Basin, and toll process it at Lost Creek. That saves us a good bit of capital on the back end of the plant at Shirley Basin now that we don't have to build out because we'll simply ship the product over to Lost Creek for processing. Switching to Shirley Basin, it will also be an in situ facility once we build it out. Again, it's in Wyoming, uh, south of Casper, Wyoming. It is completely licensed and permits. We don't need any more licenses or permits. We can make the decision today to build out and operate without any additional approvals from DEQ or EPA or the Bureau of Land Management. It's got a resource of 8.8 .8 million pounds measured and indicated. Uh, I'm gonna make a distinction here with Lost Creek. Shirley Basin is completely drilled out. So while I've got lots of room to grow at Lost Creek, at Shirley Basin, it is what it is. Uh, that's the bad side, it's not gonna grow. The good side is we don't need to put any money in the drill bit at Shirley Basin to explore for the ore body or delineate the ore body. It is already drilled out very heavily and we have all of the records in place. We believe that Shirley Basin was probably the first in situ uranium mine in the world back in 1963 where it was run as an experiment using acid leach. It was quite successful, but ultimately the company decided to go back to conventional techniques because it was simply an experiment. They didn't have full faith in it yet. But Shirley Basin is licensed at a million pounds a year. Uh, we're looking at making a decision, hopefully before the end of this year, of whether or not to build it out and ramp up production. 
capital cost there, estimating, this is a rough estimate of around $40 million to build it out and put it into production. Again, you might say, wow, that's a small number. Well, it's because it's in situ. We can build out in situ facilities very quickly and with minimal capital. The build out time, we're looking at about 24 months. Of that 24 months, only about six months will be for construction. Uh, the rest of the time will be allocated toward waiting for parts. Uh, as many people have indicated, there are a lot of supply chain issues. We're well aware of that. We've actually uh, gone, gone ahead and approved uh, that we go ahead and buy out the motor control centers, transformers, and other long lead items. So that process has started. So effectively, that 24-month clock has already been started. Uh, you guys have all heard from a number of uranium uh, companies, so I'm not going to talk too much about the nuclear investing thesis. I'll just hit a few of the highlights and let you read the slides. But really, nuclear is green energy. And that's why about five years ago, the world really began to uh, recognize the benefits of nuclear, and it became increasingly popular. And a lot of reactors are being built around the world. That's increasing demand, and suppliers simply are not keeping up with that. Uh, I'll just focus on China here, the very top bullet. They are looking at building 150 reactors in the next 15 years. That is a massive build out in comparison to the existing reactor fleet globally. So they themselves are putting a lot of pressure on supply as they buy pounds uh, to feed into those plants. We're seeing a lot of support here in the U.S. on Capitol Hill, Republicans and Democrats. They don't agree on anything, but when it comes to nuclear, they are in agreement we need more nuclear power. So we are seeing increasingly uh, good legislation coming out of Congress. We're also seeing support from the White House, uh, including some legislation to cut off the supply of uranium coming out of Russia. Believe it or not, the U.S. is still importing uranium from Russia. That shocks a lot of people. Uh, Russia is an important part of the story because they do a lot of the processing, not mining, but processing. So right now the Western world is attempting to catch up with conversion and enrichment, uh, and it's going to take time to be able to do that. That's going to put more pressure on the supply as it will take more uranium to feed into those enrichers uh, to put out the supply that's needed. Globally, when you look at the uranium miners, it's a difficult story. Kazakhstan mines roughly 50 percent of the world's primary uranium supply. Um, th this is a bit debatable, but I would say that uh, Russia has a lot of influence when it comes to Kazakhstan. Certainly, they have significant ownership in a number of the large mines there, and uh, I believe they exert a lot of geopolitical pressure there. So that supply coming out of, of uh, Kazakhstan, I think, is uh, questionable at best. And we're also seeing a lot of transportation issues coming out of Kazakhstan, in part because no one wants to insure uranium being shipped out of Kazakhstan and through Russia uh, into the Baltic Sea. Uh, the Chinese, they've been growing their ownership in uh, uranium mines in Africa and in other places, so they're becoming a more dominant player. Uh, MacArthur River, Cigar Lake, they've been ramped up, but Cameco has found that to be quite challenging. I'm confident Cameco will get there in their production but it is slower than they expected. And then the, the, the coup in Niger has also put supply at risk. So this chart may be a little bit difficult to read, so I'll just kind of hit the, the highlights here. I want to point out that much of the world's supply is controlled by governments, not by publicly traded companies. Uh, Kaz Adam Prom, Rose Adam, Arano, companies like that. Um, so if you want to invest in a uranium miner who is actively putting pounds in the can, globally you have two options. It's Cameco and my company, UR Energy. We are the only two publicly traded miners putting pounds in the can. Now that's likely going to change over time, but the risk to getting mines up and running and the challenges of doing so, they're high. It's a high bar to break into that realm. Some companies are going to be quite successful. Some companies are not going to be successful. So right now, the options for investing are quite limited. So going back to Lost Creek, again, we've got 10 years of production. Uh, our cost of production has been very low. I'll talk more about that. But people often ask me, why has your cost been so low compared to other in situ miners, especially in the US? One of the reasons is our recovery rates have been extremely high. Typically, uh, in the US, you'll get 60 to 80% recovery at an in situ mine. We've been uh, experiencing 90% recovery over the long term. We also have a very low royalty burden, a less than 1% royalty on Lost Creek and Shirley Basin. So that helps us keep our costs low. 
We are also able to pipeline in our resource throughout the area here into the plant at Lost Creek. So at Lost Creek, we don't need to build another satellite. Everything can be pipelined into the existing plant. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of room for growth. Uh, a lot of geologic horizons have not been explored yet at Lost Creek. So I keep saying we're low cost. Here's the proof. These are not models. These are real gap compliant audited numbers that we've published. Draw your attention to 2015, the numbers that are highlighted, uh, because that's the year we reached economies of scale. Nearly 800,000 pounds of production. Our average cash cost that year was a little over $16 a pound. The all-in mine site that year was just over $33 a pound. Now that's 2015. Inflation is real. So if you want to look at our numbers, our cost going forward, you need to add inflation to that. So it'll be several dollars a pound higher, but this does point out that historically we've been able to get to a very low cost of production, and we're looking forward to getting back to that again. So right now at Lost Creek, that is our focus, getting it ramped up. All of our energies are being put into that. We have the two new header houses into production. We have another third header house that will be coming online in the uh, imminent future. We're in increasing our disposal water capacity by installing a deep well. We're staying on top of that supply chain issue by advanced purchasing. We've been able to keep our key staff, which is absolutely critical. That has been probably our greatest challenge in start restarting the mine is getting staff. We are staffed up now. Our contractors are still working on their staffing, but that has been our, our greatest challenge. The Green Revolution, I'm not going to focus on this too much. Uh, probably everyone in this room knows that nuclear power is carbon free. But I do love that top bullet. That, that says a lot. The pounds that we will recover at Lost Creek and Shirley Basin, the energy they will produce compared to the same energy generated by coal-fired will offset over 300 million metric tons of CO2, which is the equivalent of taking 67 million cars off the road for a year. That, that's an important part of our ESG story. Uh, research and development at uh, UR Energy is a part of our DNA. For years now, we've been looking for better ways to do it. And those top four bullets, those are areas where we have found better ways to do it to reduce our carbon uh, footprint, reduce our environmental footprint, and oftentimes reduce our cost along with that. We've also announced two additional research and development projects. One is an injection well casing and installation methodology. Uh, we've through phase one testing on that, excited to move into phase two testing. And we are also working on advanced water treatment and filtration, uh, having some good success there. We've had to pull manpower off of that for a few months while we're ramping up. We've got limited bandwidth, but we're hoping in the next couple, three months to get back to these R&D projects and advance them. So looking at our financial highlights, we have a good strong cash position, 55 million cash in the bank. Uh, we've got a, a pretty good inventory remaining through the rest of this year. We do have a little bit of debt, $5.7 million at 5 and 3 quarters percent interest. Uh, a lot of companies don't like to talk about debt, but there is a, a sunny side here to this story. The state of Wyoming actually gave us the money to build out our Lost Creek plant, $34 million at 5 and 3 quarters interest. That shows you how much support we have from our state government in Wyoming. They put their money where their mouth is when it comes to, to mining. The uh, next bullets highlight our sales contract book. Again, three contracts in place. We are actively working on three additional contracts. We've made a press release on that. Uh, but it's the equivalent of $220 million revenue over the next six years, averaging $62 a pound. Keep in mind, when we signed these contracts, the price of uranium was not $74 a pound like it is today. The price of uranium was more like 50. And we were given a premium. Uh, by companies because they want U.S. supply. So most, most of this information here is available on your uh, Yahoo Finance or wherever you get your financial uh, data from. But I always like to point out that middle panel because we have very sophisticated shareholders on the institutional side. We're greater than 50 percent institutional held. Uh, companies like Lloyd's Harbor, which is Sachem Cove, is probably the name you know them by, Segra, Azarius, others that are very sophisticated in the space. And we also have great coverage when it comes to the analyst. So just in closing, the takeaways were well, well financed, ramping up production at Lost Creek so we can sell into those long-term contracts. Uh, we've also uh, got some good header houses online. There are a lot of catalysts right now in the uranium space that many of the speakers have covered. Uh, that was a very quick purview of uh, UR Energy. If you have further questions, 
be glad to entertain them now if we've got time. Otherwise, here's my contact information, and please feel free to reach out. We'll be glad to talk some more. Thanks.